Avicenit, hum. Avicenit, hum. I've had your word and Avicenit, hum. and put you down in my heart. When I hear the word of God, it always sounds so sweet. I like to make a Bible sandwich. And eat it if I could. Oh, yeah. I've heard your word and I've eaten it. Hum. I've eaten it. Hum. I've eaten it. Hum. I've heard your word and I've eaten it. Hum. And put it down in my heart. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this week. As you want to start the children's sermon, please help the boys and girls understand about the Lord's Supper. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My name is Andy, and I'm here with Grace. The Glorious Chorale has been presenting the children's sermon for the month of December. Our theme this month is... The Lord's Supper, also known as the Holy Communion. On the first Sabbath of this month, we learned about Christ, the sacrificial lamb. We reminded ourselves why we celebrate the Lord's Supper. On the second Sabbath, we were taken through the sanctuary that God commanded Moses and the Israelites to build for him. Because Jesus died for us, we no longer have to bring animal sacrifices like the Israelites. Last Sabbath, we learned about Jesus, the servant savior. Something very important happened during the Last Supper. Andy, can you tell the boys and girls what happened? Jesus, who is Lord and Master, washed his disciples' feet. None of the disciples wanted to do this dirty job, but Jesus taught his disciples that he not come to be served, but to serve others and be a ransom for many. He set an example for all of us, and he said, If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet, for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Today we are diving deeper into this month's lesson. But first, I have a question for you, Andy. How do you celebrate holidays? Well, sometimes my family and I have a big party and invite other family members and friends. During Bible times, people often celebrated holidays by having a great feast. Before dying on the cross for us, Jesus celebrated the Passover with his disciples. Jesus used the holiday meal as a symbol so his followers could remember him and all that he was about to do for them. So, today's topic is Jesus, the bread of life. And our memory verse comes from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. And, and it, it says, Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show others about the Lord's death until he comes. Gracie, I was just wondering, is Jesus really a piece of bread that we can eat? Well... That's a very good question, Andy. Jesus used bread as a symbol to pass a very important message to us. You see, just like the song that we sang, we won't really eat the Bible, but when we read the Bible and treasure the message to our hearts, we have eaten a Bible sandwich. Jesus uses bread. Bread is used as a symbol. What is a symbol? A symbol is something that represents something else. This can be a strange idea, but let me use the bookmarks in my Bible to explain. I use photographs. I use photographs as a book. I use photographs as bookmark. I use photographs of people who are special to me as a bookmark. So every day I open my Bible, I see these two pictures that I use as a bookmark. But I actually know that these are not actually the people who are special to me. They're just pictures that represent them as symbols to remind me of them. So I think about them and I pray for them. That's how the Lord's Supper is. Aha! Uh -huh. I get it now. But let's break it down for our younger audience. Okay, Andy. That means we have to go back in time to the very first time when the children of Israel were celebrating the Passover. Okay, Andy. Ready to jump back in time? Ready when you are. Okay, now we are back in Egypt. You see, okay, now we are back in Egypt. God was setting the Israelites free from slavery in Egypt. 
In the same way, he will set all mankind free from slavery to sin and the curse of death. Aha! So the Passover pointed back to the time when the Israelites were set free from slavery in Egypt and forward to the time when Jesus will die for our sins and set us free from slavery to sin? Exactly! Now back in Egypt, the meal was to be prepared and eaten in haste or very quickly. You see, the people, of, the people was to get, were getting ready to leave Egypt at a moment's notice. The, the children of Israel had been slaves for 400 years. And the Bible says that they were to eat with their belts on their waists, their staff in their hands, and their staffs in their hands, and their sandals on their feet. Now, you may think this is a strange way to eat a meal, but as you can see, I am ready to escape slavery. Now, the Israelites celebrated the Passover for hundreds of years. Now, let us jump forward to the Last Supper. During Jesus' time, the, he sent his disciples to make a very special Passover meal. Now, what do we have on our Passover dinner table? The meal was prepared differently. We have already talked about the lamb that represented Jesus, who is the perfect sinless sacrifice for our sins. No bone would be broken on the lamb. In the same way, no bone would be broken on Jesus' body. And I can see some red here. This is not just ordinary bread. This is unleavened bread, which means bread without yeast. The bread symbolizes Jesus' body, broken for our sins. And the yeast represents sin. But remember, Jesus, the bread of life, has no sin. The Bible tells us that Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. Jesus told his disciples that the bread symbolized his body. Broken, so they had to share it amongst themselves and do this to remember him. And then Jesus took the cup. Jesus took the cup, held it, and blessed it. And he told his disciples, the cup was filled with unfermented wine, which is grape juice. And he told his disciples that this symbolized the new covenant or promise that God had between, that God had with mankind. The cup, the wine represents, the wine represents Jesus' blood, which will be poured out for our sins. And that is what we celebrate in our church today at the Holy, Co the Last Supper or the Holy Communion. So every time we partake of the Holy Communion, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we are telling the story of Jesus, how he came and died for our sins, so that you and I may have eternal life. Our prayer is that you accept Jesus in your life and get baptized, and join us in this wonderful celebration as we wait for the second coming of Jesus. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for helping us have this beautiful sermon. Please help many people to choose to be baptized and help us to celebrate the Holy Communion. Please, please, we, please bless us, and we also we look forward to be with you in heaven forever. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. For the glorious chorale, that is all we have for you today. Bye! Bye.